Hello there. This is Music Man 0150, also known as Gary. And yes, I am back with another video for ya. And this is the next to the last TV that you haven't seen yet in the collection that I've acquired. And this one is called a Sampo TV. Not Sample, but Sampo. S-A-M-P-O. And you can see that this TV is more like a cream color. I think it was white. I think it was all white at one time. But now it's cream. So either the previous owner either had it in the sun or just from, you know, age that it yellowed itself. But anyway, you can see how in great condition this set is and right here is the logo Sampo and then the uh, on off volume control is here the UHF tuning and the VHF tuning and notice on the VHF tuning that there's an extra selection there's the U and then there's a dot and then you go to channel 2 so I'm not exactly sure what the extra dot selection is for unless that was maybe when they were still thinking of bringing back channel 1 on VHF because at one time when TV first started there was a channel 1 and then they eliminated 1 by moving channel 2 down 6 megahertz. So where channel 2 is really would have been channel 1 and then channel 3 would have been the original 2, 4 would have been the original 3 and so forth. And the reason I say that is because on some TVs on the VHF tuning if you tune between channel 4 and channel 5 that are current there's another area that is not used for TV casting and that is a set frequency probably now for and it's been that way for a long time I believe it's for aircraft or some kind of uh, repeater frequency I forget the exact frequency uh, in numbers that that section is but uh, well, let's see 54 to 60, 60 to 66, 66 72 oh 72 to 76 megahertz no 72 to 78 megahertz so that that extra selection between channel 4 and channel 5 that would have actually been the channel 1 and it actually is if you're referring to cable systems but for regular broadcast uh, that's that's really non-existent I mean you could tune it in but you wouldn't get any TV casting there so anyway that's probably why the uh, the extra dot is there and then they just eliminated it completely but uh, that's the front of the set and then of course you could see here how everything is light in color you know the cabinet is like a cream color and then the front is like a silver color and I'll turn it around so you can see the back and you could see even too how the how the back where the picture tube comes out is much deeper I'll go here on the side and you can kind of see see how that uh, see how that picture tube really really sticks out so that's because the cabinet in general is pretty narrow and then they had to just make extension for the the neck of the picture tube and you can see it says Sampo this is model number B1241 AC 120 volts 60 Hertz 28 watts so that's not it's not bad consumption at all it's in fact it's very very good and the only thing I'm trying to see here 
is the uh, the date date of manufactured oh here it is right here manufactured can't can't see it manufactured oh it says April I can't see it with the naked eye with the camera so let me look here on the naked eye real quick 1984 so this is a 1984 model and down here you can see where the auxiliary controls are you have the not necessarily in the order but you have your brightness your contrast vertical and horizontal so this one has every control on it except that it's all in the back so that's a little description of the set and right here is your antenna hookup or cable hookup UHF VHF and you can kind of see too how this is similarly designed between the Emerson set that I showed you and the General Electric set that I showed you. So this is like a combination of both of them put together made by Sampo and theoretically that's that's why because as, as you recall the GE TV was made in 83 and I can't remember when the Emerson one was was made I, I don't even know if we even looked at that but anyway let's go ahead and power this up it's already plugged in so let's just turn it on and see what happens sometimes when you turn it on it tends to do a little pop like that in the volume but otherwise it works really really good as you can see here got it tuned to one of the in-house channels this is channel 16 because actually it's the only one that's active right now because of this because of the other devices being shut off but you can see how the picture is on there it's really really clear you know as far as sharpness goes and of course the tuning works perfectly as you can see it's got a nice wide range so that's that's nice and the VHF isn't connected but on this particular set the VHF is not tuned independently if you tune one channel in and then you go to select another one then you have to refine tune it and some of those sets you had to do that with but that's okay that's pretty much how some sets were made I think it's I think those were the cheaper made ones and then the more quality ones they had the individual VHF tuning capability where you can tune one channel and then you don't have to retune it if you'd go to another channel or if the other channel is in tune and the previous one isn't you can tune in the previous one and the other one doesn't change so I think those are the higher quality sets at that time but anyway you can see the uh, the performance of it I'll tell you what I'm going to do too because this sender here is tuned to channel 14 let's turn it around so that it's facing the right direction because I was using this sender to troubleshoot the uh, the DVD player that I showed you in a previous video and I gotta tell you a little story about that one too in, a, in another video uh, but let's go ahead and see what we can do here by getting this sender hooked back up so we can get quality or a video image on channel 14 so you can see the see the difference of the picture quality and as usual I'm doing everything with one hand since I'm holding the camera there we go okay now let's go ahead and flip the VCR on because that's where I have it connected to now we should be able to get something on 14 there we go and the reason I wanted to do that is because I still have to do some minor 
uh, connections over in the other room where channel 16 is coming from. So there's no sound on there, but there's sound on 14, so now you can hear the sound. Don't put it off. Call 1-800-317-2700 now. Get even more Springer 24 hours a day. Log on at jerryspringertv.com. It's the best way to satisfy all of your Springer. There you go. Nice, nice sound performance on this, even through the senders. The sound is real, real clear. Because if you recall on some of the other sets I showed, the uh, the sound wasn't too good. Like the Emerson TV, the sound was real distorted. Uh, I forget what other set I showed you that had some kind of sound trouble as well. But anyway, that's the the Sampo set, and this now makes the tenth. I believe it's the tenth. TV you've seen in, in uh, the videos that I've uh, posted. So there's actually one more that you haven't seen yet and it's a very very odd one. It's the Sears model and I saved that one actually for last, not on purpose per se, it just happened to, to uh, come out that way you know in showing the sets that I was able to get to at the time. So the Sears one, when you see that one, you're going to see why it's, um, it's a little bit different from all the others. So I'm going to uh, conclude this video because I want to make another one separately from this and to tell you about the DVD player combo that I showed you in the last video or not the last one but in a previous one that I posted so with that I'm going to conclude now and say this is Music Man 0150 signing off for now hope everybody has a great day and we'll be posting more videos for you real real soon thanks for watching